guys. Today I'm going to be reading you Pinduli by Janelle Cannon. She also wrote Stella Luna, which we read last week, and she wrote Verity, which if you're in my third grade class, then we read that, and it's one of our favorites before. So before we start this book, I want you to look at the type of animal that Pinduli is. This is Pinduli. You might be able to guess. You're going to find out in the book, but right now I want you to think about what type of animal that is. And then I want you to look at the back, see all these different types of animals. I want you to think about where the setting of this book might be based upon the backdrop we see here on the cover and then all the different types of animals. Think about the setting. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy Pinduli. I am going to be uh, thinking about and then asking some questions throughout the book that you can pause and you can talk with your parents or your brother or sister, or just think yourself about the answer to those questions as I read. All right, Pin Dooley by Janelle Cannon. Oh, this book was donated to us by the Going family. Thank you, Daniel and his family. The sun was low in the East African sky. Find out where it's set right in the very beginning. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon, and now they began to stir. Penduli awoke before Mama Hyena. We also find out what type of animal Penduli is. Eager to explore. Don't go far, Mama yawned. We must hunt soon. There has been so little to eat lately that we'll need all night to find enough to fill our bellies. Penduli promised to stay close and trotted away. As Penduli passed the water hole, she spied sleepy animals in the brush. She sniffed the air, which was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells, but something was not so exquisite or mysterious. It was the smell of a dog. Penduli's sharp ears picked up the soft pounding of pads on the dirt. She spotted a pack of wild dogs at play on a faraway ridge, and then they saw her. The leader dashed towards Penduli. The others trailed behind and yelped, Watch out, dog! It's a hyena! Just a shrimpy one dog scoffed, coming closer. If it didn't have all that stripy fur, those ears would make me think it was a baby elephant. The pack erupted into wheezing laughter and galumped away, tongues lolling. Penduli had never given a thought to her ears. Were they really so big? She let them fall flat against her head, flip-flop. I can hardly hear now, Penduli thought, but she kept her ears down. Poor Penduli. Ahem, a rumbling voice came from the scrub. Ahem, Penduli whirled around, a lion. The little hyena poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her size. She was sure that she was mighty fierce, but Lion just calmly looked her up and down. Then he leaned his old scarred face nearer and said, That prickly fringe hardly becomes you, young lady. And Dooley's mane flopped as she hurried away. She had never given a thought to her coat. Was it really so straggly? Penduli circled back to the water hole, waded into the pool, and let the water soak into her fur. She figured that when the water ran off, her coat would lie flat. No more prickly fringe. Zebra and two friends strolled over, but their brown eyes glinting at the sight of the soggy little hyena Penduli didn't like their amused look. She tried to lower herself deeper into the water and disappeared, but she was too late. If you are going
going to do stripes. Please, please, please work on your symmetry and clarity. Good grooming, not soaking. We'll take some of that unpleasant haziness out of your patterns, whinnied Zebra. Then the three tossed their heads, dipped their lips into the water, and drank. Penduli splashed past the startled zebras and escaped to a quiet spot. Were her stripes really so disorderly? Didn't Mama Hyena always say she was the most beautiful hyena ever? She rolled and rolled in the pale dust which stuck to her wet fur. Soon her soft stripes had completely vanished. Ears pinned, coat flattened and dusted to a pallid gray, Penduli wanted nothing more than to get home, hoping no one would notice her. I'm really in trouble now, she worried. I've been gone a long time and Mama gets awful cranky when she's hungry. She almost looks like a different hyena, doesn't she? As she headed back to the rocky den, she saw lion, zebra, and dog all along with his rowdy pals hanging around the water hole. A few wildebeests were there too for an evening drink. My, it's busy here tonight, thought Penduli, edging away from the others. No luck, the animals turned to see who was coming. Their jaws dropped, their eyes bulged. And Dooley looked around wildly. What did they see? A ghost! The animals screamed. An evil spirit is upon us. They jumped and ran. Where? Where? cried Penduli as she raced behind them. Feet pounded and dust flew and no one answered. I think they don't even realize that it's Penduli. The terrified crowd tore through thorny brush over craggy stone and horrified found themselves at a dead end in a small canyon. They screeched to a halt, huddling closely as they turned to face their worst fear. Dog was the first to speak. Oh, great spirit, he howled. You've come for me, I know it, because I made fun of a young hyena's ears. All eyes were on Penduli. Ah, oh, so I'm the ghost, she thought. I'd better get into character before they recognize me. Go on, dog, said Penduli in a slow, deep voice. The spirits want to know why you would commit such a hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Dog's voice quavered. I, I don't know. I guess I was still mad at Fennec Fox for calling me Butterfly Head. Lion joined in. Please spare us your wrath. I, too, have spread discord by insulting a young hyena's mane. But Vulture called my own mane a mange. Penduli nodded sagely. Seems to me like they were only mean for a certain reason. I want you to think about why they might have been mean to that hyena, Penduli. Zebra Dumped her hoof. Owl told me that my stripes were garish. Tear, a tear rolled down her long face. Everyone fell silent. Penduli's mind whirled as she tried to think of what a ghostly spirit might say. 
Of course, spirits always give tasks and want offerings, she thought. Hmm, let's see. Okay, Mama will love this. In order to appease bad spirits, you must find your tormentors and make peace, Vinduli called out with authority. And always leave a bit of every meal as an offering. If you do this, I shall never return. She turned and glided away on her tiptoes, trying not to smile. Thank you, thank you, called the creatures. We will do as you say. Once out of sight, Kanduli raced home. Keep thinking about why the other animals made fun of Kanduli in the beginning. There you are, cried Mama Hyena as Kanduli galloped up to her. You look awful. Penduli was so glad to be home again. It was worth getting in trouble. She didn't even mind the five baths it took to get the dirt out of her fur. In fact, it took all night to get Penduli looking like a beautiful hyena again. I was worried sick. I went everywhere looking for you, said Mama Hyena as she helped smooth Penduli's coat. Now that you're all straightened up, we've got to get out and find something to eat. It's already morning and I'm sure you are as ravenous as I am. And Dooley's stomach growled. That very morning, dog, lion, and zebra searched the wild savanna until they found fennec fox, vulture, and owl. We have come here on the order of the Great Spirit, Dog announced. We must find out why you were so rude to us. Fennec Fox spoke up. I guess I was having a bad day, several cat, and I looked a little fuzzy. But several cats said I looked like a little fuzzy bat without wings. He nodded to Dog. Your ears really aren't so bad. Vulture ducked his bald head. Marabou Stork called me Moonscape, so I got mad and made fun of Lion. Owl moaned. Adder said my feathery stripes look more like scribbles. Let's go find those three and get to the bottom of this, said Dog. The oddball crowd went searching and found Serval, Marabou, and Adder. We've come here on the order of the Great Spirit, they declared. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble for laughing at owl stripes, hissed Adder. Missy Rudd, do you remember when I said your stripes were dull, mumbled Zebra. Marabou stepped forward on his stilt-like legs. Lion told me that the glare of the sun on my head hurt his eyes. Sorry, grumbled the big bald cat. Then Dog blurted out, Oh dear, Serval, please forgive me. Serval's amber eyes squinted at Dog. You mean for the time that the wind, you said that the wind might pick me up by my giant ears and blow me away? He said, Yep. Dog yipped. Who am I to be talking about ears? He pranced about, flopping his big ears like the wings of a butterfly. Serval burst out laughing, and everyone, including Dog, joined in. From that day on, things began to change for Penduli and her mother. Instead of spending hours hungrily scrounging for meager meals, they found delicious treats everywhere. Look again, eggs, fish, fruit, it's a miracle, exclaimed Mama. As Penduli tasted a sweet berry, she said, the great spirit must be smiling upon us. 
Mama Hyena looked at her grinning daughter. Wait a minute, did you have something to do with this? Laughing and feasting, Penduli told the whole story. You're not you're not only the most beautiful hyena ever, said Mama. You're the smartest hyena ever. I want you to think about why she said that Penduli was the smartest hyena ever. All right, guys. I love this book because it shows us that one unkind comment can go a long way. When you're unkind to somebody, it upsets them and it causes them to be unkind to other people as well. And we saw in this book that when one person was unkind to another, then it ended up that that chain just kept going. Now, it's the same way with kind words. When you say something kind to somebody else, then that means that they're more likely to go say something kind to somebody too. Okay, That's what we call paying it forward. Sometimes you see that people will pay for other people's meals in line and then it just keeps the kindness train going. Well, we want to make sure that we do that and not what happened in this book where everybody ended up being mean to each other. It can be really tough to do that when you're in a bad mood because somebody said something mean to you, but it's important that even if you get your feelings hurt, it's not right to hurt others' feelings. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this book.